welcome to our service of the word for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. This service is brought to you by the United Benefits of Old Brampton, Lousy Green and Barlow. As we meet together today, our troubling times continue, both at home and abroad. Hymns may not be scripture per se, but they do enshrine much about our faith in words that we can trust. And our first hymn today is no exception to that. It is Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, Zion City of Our God. And the words of the hymn continue in this particular verse. He whose word cannot be broken formed thee for his own abode. He whose word cannot be broken formed thee for his own abode. And what these few words alone signify is that God's word can be trusted and that he is within us. And it's within these twin pillars, these two realisations, that all worship takes place. And so we sing our first hymn, Glorious things of thee are spoken. mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you Lord open our lips so, so we, we can, can shout your, your praises Lord open our eyes so, so we, we can, can see your wondrous, wondrous works Lord open our ears so, so we, we can, can hear your call Lord open our hearts so, so we, we can, can live, live a life of love. love this is the day that the Lord has made 
let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. From chaos you created the world, and in love you made us in your image. By your death and resurrection you have brought us to new life. May the light of Christ shine in our hearts as we offer you our thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. We come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may be renewed for the service of God. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. As we say together, most merciful Father, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not, not loved, loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your we mercy forgive what we have been. Help, help us, us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. God. Amen. May the God who is both power and love forgive you and free you from sin. Be at peace and forgive others. Forgive yourself. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord who, who has, has heard, heard the, the voice, voice of our prayer. prayer. Therefore our hearts dance for joy and, and we, we shall praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And so we come to our first reading, uh, which is brought to us by David Riley of the Fellowship at Lansley Green. A reading from the third and fourth chapter of the book of Jonah. When God saw the Ninevites and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became very angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? This is, that, this is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head, to ease his discomfort, and Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at the dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I am so angry I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand people, who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is brought to us by Nick Roberts of the Fellowship of Elbrampton. Letter of Paul to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker. To Aphia, our sister. To Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have, indeed, received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Wansimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me, so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent, in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but as more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he's wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. One thing more, Prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping, through your prayers, to be restored to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel and following sermon is brought to us by Kate Brookbank, who is our lay reader. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. The labourers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired at about five o'clock came, each of them received 
the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. For the gift of his holy word. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I remember being really upset because mum and dad were always bailing out my two brothers, whether it be by giving them money or goods. They were continually giving to my two brothers, but not to me. I could not understand why this was happening and after being upset for some time I decided to confront my mum as to why this was happening and why wasn't I being treated the same. I had a Saturday job and was continually looking after people, running errands and behaving. So why were my brothers getting all the gifts and handouts when they were getting into trouble financially and also fighting and misbehaving? And I got nothing. When I confronted my mum, she turned around and said, But you don't need help. You have money and you have the goods that you need and you are behaving. Your brothers need help, so we will help them. Why are we so worried about being fair? I've seen children saying that after making cakes, he always gets the bowl when I don't. Why did he get two pieces of cake and I only got one? Adults can question why someone gets promotion when we have been working there the longest. Why do people leave the money in their will to one person in the family and not to the other? If we look at this scenario again, a person decides to leave their money to a particular member of the family. It is their money and their choice. So why do we get so upset about it? When the labourers in the vineyard only work for one hour and receive the same amount of money than those working all day in the vineyard, why do the ones working all day get so upset? If a landowner wants to give them the same amount of money, regardless of how long they've worked for, why should we be upset? Surely it should be the choice of a landowner and not us. God tells us in today's Gospel a parable about the landowner paying the workers the same amount of money even though some have worked longer than others. Because God is showing us the example that the leader decides on how much each person should be paid and we should trust and accept their decision. This parable is to illustrate that God is the leader and invites everyone into his kingdom, whatever the time, whatever the place they are in, and wherever they are. The words of a martini advert from the 70s springs to mind, which says any time, any place, anywhere. But this is very true of God. So let's look at any time. You can accept God's invitation at any time in your life. People may have been brought up within a Christian family and accepted God's invitation at a very early age. However, some may have rejected or ignored God all their life. But through illness or through a particular event, or even when they are dying, they then wish to know God. 
Where are we when we decide to follow God? So let's look at any place. Could this be when sleeping rough in town and lying in the doorway, locked in the police cell for being drunk and disorderly? Perhaps when climbing a mountain, driving to work, cutting the grass, or when sat quietly reflecting. God reaches out to us all, so let's look at anywhere. God will accept us from any town, village, county or country, as we are all God's children and he will treat every single one of us equally and with love, grace and mercy. It is God's decision, not ours, so we should be humble and accept what God wants and what God does. Amen. And so we say together the Celtic Creed. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. So we come to our time of intercessory prayer. We pray for the unity and peace of the Holy Church of God throughout the world. At this time we pray for all those churches that are seeking to find ways of safely opening the worship and continuing worship and serving their communities in these pandemic times. We pray that the fear and reality of infection may be removed and that all may feel confident about measures put in place. And we pray for the work of all those who are putting those measures in place. We pray for all who attend services either in church buildings or online, that they and we will find comfort and strength And we pray for all those who have the task of making decisions about what takes place and events opening. We pray too that in these troubled times, the voice of the church as a beacon of light will be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray for the peace and stability of all peoples and for those in authority. At a time when stability in world affairs seems in short supply, we pray for all those caught up in national social unrest. We especially pray in the world for areas of the USA suffering the tragic consequence of bushfires. We pray for the continual racial unrest there and elsewhere. That all may feel they have a place in our society.
We pray for the people of Belarus as they continually long for freedom from government oppression. And we remember those who are willing to face imprisonment and hardship as a result of their beliefs. And we pray where, for those areas of the world of greatest poverty, poverty, areas which have been most affected by virus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country and its national life and for all those who dwell among us. And so at this pivotal time in our national history, we, we pray for those in authority who must make decisions which will affect us all. We pray for those who make decisions about our well-being and health at this time. We pray for all those who are struggling to get tests, virus tests, and to be assured of their own health for the sake of themselves and for others. We pray for all those who are making decisions about our economic life. And we pray particularly for those who are in fear of losing their jobs and livelihoods. We pray for compliance for all those of us who are affected by changes in community life. Above all, we remember that in all this, it is individual lives that are affected. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love. And we give thanks for the support we are receiving from those we know. The sense of shared feeling. Remembering always that in love there is strength, a strength which cannot be extinguished by adversity. And so we pray silently in our hearts for those we know at this time who need our prayers. And we remember especially those who are not well. And we name them in our hearts and lift them up to the throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who sleep in Christ, that Christ will remember them in his heavenly kingdom. And so we pray for all who grieve the loss of a loved one and those who minister to them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves that we will feel God's guiding hand on our lives at this time.
Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Our prayer. And the collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy set, sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be vervent in the fellowship of the gospel, but always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our and Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so we come to our second and final hymn, which is, Father, hear the prayer we offer. And again, as I said at the beginning, uh, the words of hymns are very often a big source of our faith and can be relied on, we can trust them. And this is no exception. So uh, I, I think if we, I can encourage you all and myself to, as we sing this hymn, uh, apply the words very much to ourselves and our own lives. And so we sing together, Father, hear the prayer we offer. service let us say together Lord surround us with your love as we go from this act of worship let lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth and ears that have heard your word always listen to your will give us the grace to work for the coming of your kingdom here on earth 
for the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God's blessing for us. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you. Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, act of worship. And I pray that your, your lives will open out to greater fulfilment and hope.